Hi friends, a short video on why you need to learn Python. So what next after Kubernetes for administrators? So generally, we people after doing certified Kubernetes administrator, they feel what, nec what, what they need to do next. What I would suggest is as an administrator, you can go and learn Python because Python is the next in thing. Most of the applications Development is happening in uh, Python, data science, a lot of scope is there for uh, Python. That's what we see in all aspects also. Because in uh, Python is the closest to shell scripting because administrators, administrators or who are infrastructure engineers who may want to get certified in Kubernetes, the nearest them thing to them is Python. Rather than going straight away into higher high-end languages like C or uh, for that matter Java or other languages, Python is actually bridging the gap between the, the other extreme software languages like R or Go or other languages and, and then and shell scripting. So when you learn Python, you are, in, you are going towards, you are slightly moving away from shell scripting, but also moving towards software uh, development. So definitely as a DevOps engineer or a Kubernetes engineer, definitely or SRE engineer, Learning Python is a must. That's what, uh, from my experience, this is uh, what I feel. Because that helps you in developing small ap applications or also like monitoring tools, understanding a uh, lot of tools. So that's where we feel Python will help you in the long run. See, everything, whatever you, whatever you learn now, it may not help you immediately. But upskilling yourself with uh, Python or other languages, is going to definitely help you in the long run for that for learning all these languages docker containers or for that matter any uh, data sciences ibm has got a lot of free courses i have given that link in this description cognitive classes so it's just free you register you get you can become an expert in that or you can become a beginner so definitely there is a growth path for everyone so learn that and you have you can easily go up the ladder as far as a developer or a infrastructure, infrastructure engineer is uh, concerned. And that is the path you need to take because Python is a must uh, known knowledge expected from most folks. And it is not all that difficult. It is closer to shell scripting. But of course, it has its, it is also a developer language. So you are bridging the gap between the developer and the and the Unix admin or infrastructure engineer for that matter. So you are coming closer to the developments, CI, CD, all these other things. And of course, once you do the Kubernetes uh, certification, you can also do the AWS certified uh, developer associate uh, certification. So that also will add more value to your resume. And that also helps you in upskilling yourself because if you know Python and then you do this developer associate, your value is uh, going to go up because you have multiple skills now. You have a, you're a CKA or a CKA plus your AWS developer associate with Python because AWS developer associate helps you with any, you can choose any language, either Python or Java or any language for that matter. So if you choose Python as a skill, you are also getting certified in the developer associate also, plus also getting to improve your skills. So definitely after getting your CKA certification, the next growth path is learning Python. Again, all the best. Let me give you the story of my GDP. The first trillion took me 67 years. The second trillion took me eight years. The third trillion took me five years. Are you seeing where I'm progressing? But let me tell you more, something more interesting. From 2015 until now, that is what, we are nine years? I moved ahead of Russia, Italy, Brazil, France, UK, from number 10 to number 5 in size of my GDP. I'm knocking at Germany by the end of this year or early next year, I become number 4. And before the pandemic, I was the fastest growing large economy on the planet. And after the pandemic, I am the fastest growing large economy on the planet. This story, ladies and gentlemen, has just begun. Ladies and gentlemen, just 9,000 from days from today, I'll turn 100. 15th August, 2047. 
I'm an ancient civilization, but I'm one of the youngest democracies on the planet. We often forget that. And on that day, 21% of the world's workforce will be in India. 20% of the world's middle class will be in India. This is the new India. When will you think you are a successful startup nation? And I had said, the day an Indian mother is willing to give her daughter in marriage to a young startup. In a period of 84 months, you are number three in the world in number of unicorns. You are number two in the world in number of startups. You are number one in the world with new startups adding every day. The total FDI I have received in my history from 1947 has been about 950 odd billion dollars. 532 of them has come in the past 90 months. It's come from 162 countries. It's a global record. Remember, FDI is not just about the dollar coming in. FDI is about trust. FDI is about the world's trust in you, in your future, in your leadership, in your opportunity, in your entrepreneurship, and your ability to partner with them and to deliver on their faith and trust in you. 162. And let me tell you, for eight consecutive years from 2015, we set up a new FDI record for ourselves every year. Even in the midst of the lockdown in 2022, the most unprecedented lockdown in human history, you received your highest ever FDI of $83.5 billion. Highest ever. Ladies and gentlemen, just 9,000 from days from today, I'll turn 100. 15th August, 2047. I'm an ancient civilization, but I'm one of the youngest democracies on the planet. We often forget that. And on that day, 21% of the world's workforce will be in India. 20% of the world's middle class will be in India. This is the new India, which wants to be with you, partner with you, and walk for your future and for ours. Thanks for watching. In the video, like, share, subscribe. Thanks.